Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com. At long last, Google has released Google Maps for iOS devices, ending our frustrations with Apple Maps. It's a really awesome application, but there are a lot of hidden gestures that you need to know about if you have an iPhone. In this video, we're going to cover all of them. Let's get to it. Okay, lots to talk about here, and be sure you subscribe to the Pocket Now Video YouTube channel. That way you know first when we upload new videos. We'll put a link up up here so you can subscribe easily. So let's get into it here. Now, of course, in all Maps applications, you can pinch to zoom, right? Uh, but that's really a two-handed affair. You need to take out your other hand to study the phone, and then you can do the pinch to zoom. In Google Maps here in iOS, there's a new way to zoom with really one hand. And the way you do that is you double tap and slide. You see that? So you double tap anywhere you want to zoom and slide your finger up and down as if the screen becomes a zoom slider. You can do that with any finger. Just a really handy, convenient way to zoom in and zoom out really quickly uh, if you don't want to use two hands. Uh, the other gesture, well there are several more gestures we're going to show you. The other gesture which isn't new to Maps apps is the, the the rotate, I guess, the rotate of the map, which is great, especially if you're in a city where you have these beautiful uh, building models. And the other gesture is the two finger tilt, right? So Apple Maps has this, and Google Maps has had this a while for a while on Android, but the last Google Maps update for iOS, what was it, 5, uh, didn't have this capability, which was quite frustrating, so it's awesome to see it back. Uh, in iOS because it's so handy if you're moving around and you want to reposition various things on the screen. The next thing we want to show you is the side menu which of course you can access down here by tapping that. That'll allow you to turn on satellite view, uh, public transit, and look at traffic information. There's actually a quicker way to access that. It's not as intuitive. You take two fingers and you swipe in from the center of the screen on the right. So watch. And there it goes. So uh, depending on how you are oriented. If you're walking down the street, you obviously are going to press the button down here because it's a one-handed thing. Uh, if you're on a tabletop like I am here, the two-finger swipe seems to work very, very well. Another tip here is that you definitely want to sign in to your Google account like I have here. That way you get your search history and if you're using an Android device, if you have an Android device, or if you've set up Google to know where you live and where you work, it's really convenient because it places the markers right on the map. Uh, which is fantastic. And again, it keeps a search history here of all of the things that you've searched for, so you can go back and see what you've been looking for. Now, from this menu, which is accessible over here with this little person icon, you can access the, the settings. And there aren't that many settings. There's one thing that I've turned off here is the shake to send feedback because I've had some accidental shakes uh, just by walking around using Google Maps and it brings up the screen that says, do you want to send feedback? And I, I really don't want to be bothered with that. So I turned that off. Now something else that you can do here in terms of gesture, well, let's search for pizza right now. Uh, we're going to search for Pizza New York. And what we get is the map that we're used to and all these points of interest that you can tap on. But another way that you can navigate, and you just saw it down there, is you swipe from side to side to go through all of the different results that you have on the screen here. And it's just a nice way to interact and see the, the marker jump around so you can find out which pizza place is closest to you. And you can, from here, uh, click on the car, and it's going to be a long drive. And this is the navigation. It's got real built-in navigation. Uh, the various routes are shown to you, whether you want to uh, take, take a route that has more traffic or less traffic or more tolls or less tolls and so forth. And you find the one that you want, which leads us to our next tip. When we click Start, what you have here is your guided instructions. And you can swipe here at the top to get a preview of all of the turns that you're going to make. Apple Maps doesn't let you do this. And it's great to be able to like move along your route and see exactly which turns you're going to make and kind of plan your trip and see what's going on that way. So that was a look at Google Maps on iOS. Right now it's iPhone only. You might be wondering if there's an iPad app coming. If I were a betting man, I would say yes, there's definitely a Google Maps version coming for the iPad in the next few months. More people have iPhones than do iPads, so Google just wanted to release the product first 
uh, for the most amount of people. Uh, if you're wondering how the iPhone 5 is holding up, we have an After the Buzz episode where we talk about how the device is holding up after several months of use, after the newness and the buzz wore off from the initial uh, time spent with the device. So if you wanna see that, we're gonna put a link up on the video. It's highly recommended, really interesting. And if you like this video, please shoot us a thumbs up and thanks for watching. That's it for now.